So let's take it to the skies with power-armoured warriors soaring on wings of fire through the air, with a review of every faction's jump infantry in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking jump packs, and in this video I thought it could be interesting to take a look at every single Warhammer 40k army's jump infantry in 10th edition 40k, talking through what they do and very roughly a ratio of in-game power. Jump packs really are a very iconic Warhammer thing, big armoured warriors propelled through the skies, usually attached somehow to an enormous jet engine, or ready to deliver some Emperor's Justice with bolt pistol or chainsword, or lay enemies low for the Dark Gods. The ways in which Games Workshop look to expand armies, it does seem to be one of the things that they've tried to roll out to just about as many factions as might sensibly have one. In general, quite a lot of these units are quite fun dynamic ones that get to grips with the enemy quite quickly. I think in general tend to have some pretty fun models. For this video, to define what a jump pack unit is, I thought we'd go for infantry units that can fly, and in general ones that are propelled through the air by wings or some sort of thruster or teleport pack. The vast majority of these tend to use rockets or jet engines of some sort. I might make a couple of exceptions for some relevant things that have been categorised as jump infantry in the past. I feel like it wouldn't be right to leave out the Tau Crisis battlesuits out of this one. And for this video, I'm going to focus on the squads and not the characters. Plenty of these factions have at least some sort of jump HQ. I might mention a few of them with relation to the squads, though not go all in on just talking about them alone. In general, at the moment, I'd say that Games Workshop hasn't done too bad of balancing these guys as a class of units. They typically tend to move around about 10 or 12 inches with the fly keyword, and typically get to deep strike as well. Often they come in at least fairly small and cheap units. And that's generally good news for playing objectives in Warhammer 40k. Nice to have units that can catch up with enemy objective grabbers quickly, or maybe drop in to do secondaries and not be too critical if they get taken out. Between that, I'd argue that they managed to make the vast majority of jump infantry for various factions at least usable, and some are downright standout strong. Starting out with the Space Marines, as with quite a lot of the battlefield roles, they're very well represented for jump infantry, having four different types. First up, I thought we'd start with the suppressors. GW kind of jumping the shark and giving us sort of jump devastators with auto cannons here. The suppressors are clad in ominous armour and generally tasked with laying low enemy light vehicles in support of Phobos formations. For a squad of three of them, they're 85 points and come equipped with three shots at strength 8, AP 1, and damage 2 from those accelerator auto cannons and have the suppression fire word that allows you to subtract one from the hit roll of one enemy unit, a fairly handy debuff. Overall, I would say they're probably overshadowed by other Space Marine units, at least on the whole, though realistically they're really not too far behind, some people really love them. Cheap units to drop in and do secondaries, hand out a handy debuff, and the heavy keyword on their weapons can make them genuinely something to consider in the Anvil Siege Force if you're running it. I'd say their weaknesses tend to be that they're just super fragile for the cost, those power armour profiles for almost 30 points is a lot of investment. And annoyingly, you do have to choose between actually using their good movement or getting them to hit on a 3+, plus, which can be a painful choice. I've chosen to rank them a 6 out of 10 overall. For their jump pack shooting rivals, they've got the Inceptors at 130 points per 3. These guys are clad in Gravis armour, so are a bit sturdier per model, but do cost a lot more. Toughness 6 and 3 wounds, and they come bearing the Assault Bolters or the Plasma Exterminators, a fairly hefty amount of twin-linked pistol fire. The Assault Bolters being fairly murderous against Space Marine equivalents or anything lighter. The Plasma Exterminators with the big damage 3 and twin links can threaten most things. Inceptors are often taken for their meteoric descent, dropping in at anywhere greater than 3 inches away from the enemy and basically meaning that you can auto-complete certain secondaries or do crafty things with objectives. They did go up by quite a lot of points in the last points update, up to 130. Though I still think that in small numbers they can be really quite a scary competitive unit. I've chosen to give them a 9 out of 10 here, maybe a bit more critical to use right than they were before, but I still feel like 1 or 2 units can be a pretty powerful option to add into a list. It can easily be worth a points premium to get that damage exactly where it needs to be, or pretty much guarantee scoring victory points no matter what your opponent might do. Next up we've got the Vanguard Veterans, the firstborn with power weapons are 105 points, they're a more traditional assault marine sort of profile, 12 inch move, 2 wounds at toughness 4, and they strike with a flurry of heirloom weapon attacks at strength 5, AP 1 and damage 1, gaining lethal hits on the charge. 
The other main advantage over the Jump Intercessors is they can either get fancy pistols like Plasma Pistols or Inferno Pistols, or get a Storm Shield for a 4 plus Invulnerable save, making them tough against high AP things. I feel like they're really held back with not getting, say, a Power Fist on the Sergeant or a Relic Blade or anything like that. You'd really want these guys to be harder hitting things that can take down multi wound things a bit better, and they're just not with their damage 1 right now. As a result, they're really quite rarely played. I've chosen to rate them a 5 out of 10. I did notice at least one competitive Blood Angels list running them to some good success recently. I guess they're a bit better there with extra attacks and going up to strength 7. Finally for the Space Marines, we perhaps have the more iconic Jump Infantry in the Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs. 85 points per 5 of these guys. They hit with 4 attacks each at strength 4 AP 1, but the Sergeant gets a Power Fist to back that up. You get two plasma pistols in the unit, and they have their impact hit special rule. Models that charge into engagement range do a mortal wound on a 4+, plus, potentially two or three on a squad of five if you can get them all in. I do quite like the jump intercessors to be honest. They're a cheap unit to drop for secondaries, and are a fair bit tougher than the suppressors. Plus I feel like they have enough melee threats to bully lighter infantry units, particularly with the mortal wounds added on. They're just quite nice skirmishing over objectives. Again, they do seem to be pretty standout for the Blood Angels. Getting Strength 6 Swords and Strength 10 Power Fist on the charge is really quite nice, never mind all the extra attacks. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10 overall. They are pretty awesome with Kayvon Shrike of the Raven Guard as well. Getting Lone Operative on these guys is fun. Speaking of the Sons of Sanguinius though, they're certainly well known for their jump packs. The Death Company with the jump packs are a very nice unit for them. 130 points per 5 puts them as really quite expensive, but they certainly hand out the damage. The most common loadout is Inferno Pistols at range and Power Fists in melee. With their Death Company rule, they get to re-roll all the hit rolls. As mentioned in Sons of Sanguinius, they could be hitting with 4 attacks at strength 10 Power Fists in close combat each. Absolutely massive. Never mind any buffs they might get from leaders or stratagems or things. A 6 plus fill no pain that they get is also helpful. They get to re-roll charge rolls, so a little bit more reliability there. And they're often seen paired with Chaplain the Martis, who is a pretty god-tier character for them giving them lethal hits to help them punch up against the toughest things around even better, and just as importantly giving them minus 1 damage as well, turning damage 2 and 3 weapons into something that kills them really easily, into something that is nowhere near as effective. For the Blood Angels, a squad of 10 of these with Lamartes is really quite an easy choice I think if you want it. I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. The Blood Angels also have their Golden Boys in the Sanguinary Guard. These guys are just ridiculously expensive for a jump infantry unit unfortunately though. 35 points per model, so 175 points per unit. They do pay really quite a big price tag for getting mass damage 2 weapons in the unit, plus the 2 plus armor save they have. Again, they can take some Inferno pistols or Plasma pistols if they'd like. They are at least somewhat sturdy with minus 1 to hit and their 2 plus armor, which is quite good with Armor of Contempt. They get plus 1 objective control from the Sanguinary Banner, and minus 1 to wound if the Warlord is in their unit. Could be particularly nice to escort Dante around. Overall, I feel like there's just absolutely nothing wrong with their data sheet whatsoever. It's all the points cost that's holding them back. 175 points is just out of proportion with what they can do, and they're very rarely seen in competitive lists as a result. I've chosen to rate them a 5 out of 10. Not truly unusable, but you are paying a massive premium for them. The Space Wolves also get a unique jump infantry unit in the Sky Claws. 90 points per 5 of these. But they are kind of interesting in that you can take a big horde of them if you want to, all the way up to 270 points. Most of them hit with chainsaws, you can take some fun power weapons and pistols and special weapons in the unit if you'd like, and they trade the mortal wound impact hits rule for a headstrong plus one to hit on the charge, which does feel like a bit of a side graze more than an upgrade to me really. Overall, given that they're more expensive than the jump intercessors and they don't get as many attacks, I feel like they are kind of subpar here really. They do have some interest, you can add things like a sky claw battle leader into them if you'd like. I feel like if it were me, I'd probably just run them as jump intercessors right now. I've given them a 6 out of 10, not truly unusable, but they do feel eclipsed to me. For the Grey Knights, they've got their teleporting interceptor squad. 135 points for these guys with the Grey Knights with their teleport packs, making short hops through the warp to get where they need to go. Beyond that, they're equipped fairly similar to the Stripe Marines. They get their Nemesis Force weapons in close combat with 3 attacks at strength 6 and damage 2. Incinerators often tend to be the fashion at range, backed up by some Storm Bolters. Psy Cannons, I think, aren't awful either, though. And their special rule is a jump-shoot-jump mechanic, meaning that after you've shot, you can move another 6 inches, potentially meaning that you can get these guys moving spectacularly fast across the battlefield. 18 inches with that rule alone, never mind if you do any other tricks. 
Overall, with their extra movement, fully relatively small points upgrade versus strike marines, I think they're at least interesting. I feel like Grey Knight lists often want to take at least one unit of strikes for the sticky objectives rule, but these guys are very easy to deliver and can often mean that you're getting the alpha strike in melee on the opponent rather than the other way around. Maybe a good unit to pair with the other squads in the army that might be blinking on and off the board and not getting a charge off quite as reliably with a 9 inch charge. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10, maybe not truly auto include but really usable I think. The Astra Militarum are one of the armies that don't have any proper jump pack units yet. Seems like they'll be sitting this one out unless Games Workshop do go for anything in the future. I guess jump infantry maybe just feels a little bit arcane for the guard, who do have a lot of their units sort of have nods to a 20th century military sort of archetype. I guess the nearest thing that they have at the moment might arguably be the Tempestus Sounds, dropping in and firing a whole load of special weapons all around. But they're definitely more sort of paratroopers as opposed to jump packs. They don't help them move any quicker when they're on the board. Sounds can be pretty useful though, nice and small units just to drop in, do some special weapon shooting and often get in there for secondaries. They can be made really quite scary with orders dropping in now. Games Workshop certainly helped them out with the orders rule being changed to allow it to go off after deep strike. Moving on to the ab mech and we've got the bat boys who are the Taraxi. There's two variants and first up we have the sky stalkers. 65 points per unit of five of them. These guys have the fairly common raised Skitari sort of profile. Toughness 4, a 4 plus save with a 5 plus invulnerable and 2 wounds, at least okay sturdiness for the cost there, and a quite a cheap little unit for deep striking to do secondaries and threaten enemy light infantry if needed. Their main weapon is a flechette carbine which gives them 6 shots at strength 3, AP 0, damage 1, so lots of spammed things that are good at taking out light infantry, and they get the interesting sort of move shoot move mechanic after shooting which can be pretty interesting too. You could have these guys go very far forward turn one and do move blocking things, or potentially drop out of the sky and get to places that normal deep striker units can't normally get to. That can be increased to really quite a big move after drop if they're anywhere near some battle line units like some vanguard. They can be quite fun in the rad zone cohort as well, potentially getting you stacks of lethal hits on enemies that don't leave their own deployment zone. That could be a strategy to surprise people quite a bit there. Overall, I'd rate them a 7 out of 10. I feel like they're interesting enough. I think I'm maybe a little bit more tempted by their sterilizer brothers overall though. Speaking of which, the Taraxi sterilizers have basically the same sort of profile. These guys get the phosphor torches, which are essentially just standard issue flamers. Four of those and a fleshette blaster within a unit. And their damage output is boosted slightly by reroll ones to wound with the phosphor torch if they happen to be firing against a unit on an objective, or full wound rerolls if they happen to be near a battle line. They do get a tiny bit more melee than their Skystalker counterparts as well, going up to strength 4. These guys do seem pretty popular in admech lists, particularly in the Skitari Hunter cohort, big blocks of them being really quite good recipients of the stratagems and doing a good job to skirmish with enemy infantry. They can be pretty massive with Overwatch as well with so many flamers. Overall I'd rate them an 8 out of 10, not really going to be a big threat to anything bar lighter infantry, but they are maybe a bit more threats than the Skystalkers and can do a very good job of tying up and annoying the enemy as they try in advance. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10. For the Custodies we've got the Venatari Custodians which I would rate as one of the better Forge World units for them. A sturdy custodian stat line at toughness 6, 3 wounds, and they're 2 plus 4 plus invulnerable. 200 points per squad of 3. I'd probably be more tempted by the Venatari Lance out of their stat lines, having a basic sort of guardian spear profile, which is all very nice to deliver very quickly towards the enemy. Being really quite easy to move up the board fast and get them into combat with the first strike. They do also have the advantage of being able to rapid ingress for 0 CP, which is kind of big. And they also get to fall back and charge. In most custodies lists at the moment, it really seems to be the more codex plastic units that tend to get front and center stage. The Wardens, Guard and Terminators generally get taken in preference to Venatari. With free rapid ingress though, and the ability to charge things really quite a long way away, I still think they're interesting for the points premium. I'd likely not want to go overboard on them, but I think they can have a role within an army. I've chosen to rank them a 7 out of 10 here. For the Adeptus Auroritus, we've got their Angels Born Aloft on Wings of Fire. The Seraphim squad is 70 points, and these girls fight with their twin bolt pistols. A flurry of bolt shots, perhaps often backed up by Ministorum Hand Flamers or Inferno pistols. Again, their big advantage is their move shoot move, which as mentioned is really helpful for jump inventory things. They could drop in and then get closer to the enemy if they needed to for grabbing objectives and things. 
With Inferno Pistols, they could stack a fair amount of damage on enemy objective holding squads, which is quite nice for skirmishing there. Overall, they do pay a premium for their damage and defence with that, I think they're very usable. A good little nuisance unit that's going to be hard to stop getting where it needs to. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10. The other option for the Angelic Host Born Aloft are the Zephyrim Squad. These are essentially the melee version of the Seraphim, equipped with bolt pistols and power weapons. For 15 attacks at strength 4 AP2 for a squad of 5 for 60 points, going up to strength 5 on with charge, making them at least fairly good for threatening things like standard issue space marines. Their banner also allows them to re-roll advance and charge rolls for the squad, which is kind of fun too. I feel like there's good advantages to both these and the Seraphim for a fast attack type unit, and maybe rate the Zephyrim as a little bit more threat overall given all the power swords. Plus they are cheaper, which is exactly what you want in a small skirmish unit like that, but that move shoot move is really big as well. Overall I do think they're really quite interesting, I've also chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10. It could be an interesting unit to be joined by Celestine as well. Could be fun to use them to deliver her into a tricky position, and then already to stand up on death when she gets slain to have another go at killing some more enemies. That does look like it's just about it for the Imperium. Unfortunately Games Workshop hasn't graced us with a jump knight quite yet. I've helped them out with some concept art here for when they really start to run out of ideas. Moving on to the Forces of Chaos. First up we have the Raptors, nice cheap marine bodies for 90 points per 5 of them. A fairly similar profile overall to the Jump Intercessors. 4 attacks at strength 4 AP1 with their chain swords, backed up by a power fist. And they can opt to take a special weapon in the unit if they like as well. With their dread reputation they do leadership things with the chance to make the enemies take battle shocks at minus 1. And they trigger that in the fight phase as well which occasionally could be relevant for preventing stratagems or doing secondaries though it isn't usually as relevant for primaries. Raptors get their dark packs as well, so get a nice damage boost out of that in one way or another. Could be getting some sustained or lethal hits on a 5+, plus, depending on what you choose. And they do have the option to be led by Harkon World Claimer if you'd like. I did see that he did well with a big unit of Raptors in one good chaos list at a grand tournament recently. Overall I feel like they're okay. Interesting and usable as a cheap bully unit to skirmish with enemy lighter infantry. I've chosen to rank them a 7 out of 10. Their demon-possessed counterparts are the Warp Talons, 110 points per 5 of those, so a good amount more expensive than the Raptors. They're a tiny bit more durable with their 5 plus invulnerable save, and they strike with much more threatening weapons. Their Warp Claws get them 4 attacks each at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 1, all twin linked for mass saves stacked on the enemy. And their special rule is to lock enemies in Warp Flames, meaning that if you're falling back from them, you might have to test Desperate Escape. Warp Talons do seem to be a fairly competitive staple in Chaos lists, though they did go up in points a little bit recently. They're very popular with the Marcus Lanesh to give them mass sustained hits on a 5+. plus. They should absolutely blend most standard issue enemy infantry units with all that going on, particularly with the Twin Linked and the AP2. Overall I'd rate them an 8 out of 10. If anything I was debating between an 8 or a 9 for them, they can be seriously threatening, though they're not too hard to kill for their cost. For the Chaos Demons, despite having really quite a big unit roster, they don't really have anything that fits the build too cleanly as Jump Infantry. I thought given the lack of clear other options, we'd maybe go for the Flamers for them, given that they did have the Jump Infantry keyword in the past, and they are Fly Infantry that move quite quickly. Flamers are 75 points for a unit of 3 of them, move 9 inches with the classic Demon Deep Strike, and a 75 point unit of them will hit the enemy with 3 torrents of Psychic Flickering Flames, or at strength 4 AP 1 and damage 1. Big units of them seem to be at least fairly popular with demons. You can do interesting things like deep striking them, returning them to reserves, and then dropping them within 3 inches and things with stratagems. They're quite a big unit to be able to use overwatch with as well, particularly given that you can set them up in unusual locations to threaten it. On the defensive they're okay with 3 wounds with a 4 plus invulnerable, and their bounding leaps allow them to fall back and shoot. Overall I think they're pretty fun, they do seem to crop up in competitive demon lists fairly often. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10 here. Otherwise Chaos is maybe a little bit underrepresented in Jump Infantry. The Deity Legions in World Eaters, Thousand Sons and Death Guard don't really have any proper infantry squads that fit the bill. I can't help but think that they'd all really quite like Rapture equivalents, particularly the World Eaters, that it doesn't really make sense for them not to have them I think. They could certainly field them in the recent past. I guess out of these three, the closest things to jump infantry might be the Zangor Enlightened, though they count as a mounted unit and aren't really quite the same as other jump infantry out there. I'd rate them as a usable enough chaff unit for the Thousand Sons, 
cheap in points and can run around doing secondary objectives and screening things, plus maybe plinking a little bit of fire with those fake caster great bows or threatening a touch of melee. Onto the Xenos now, and first up we have the Eldari. They're really quite well supplied for jump back units with three of them if you include the Forge World units. Swooping Hawks are a particularly good one I think. 75 points for very fast moving jump troops, 14 inch movement, and striking with an actually fairly savage Las Blaster, each one getting 4 attacks at strength 4, AP 0, damage 1 with lethal hits, and some really quite serious volume fire out of just one guy here, even if they're very fragile to hit in return. Their special rule allows them to return to reserves at the end of the opponent's turn via Sky Leap, which is really quite nice for jumping off the board and then coming down to do other secondary objectives and things, and they could make some good use of the Eldari movement tricks, potentially setting up right next to a ruin to threaten Phantasm and fade away from enemy guns if needed. Overall, they seem to be very popular in competitive lists as a cheap Eldari fast-moving scoring unit. I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. Otherwise, they've got their aspect of teleporting death spinners in the warp spiders. They move a little bit slower than the swooping hawks at just 12 inches, but they do trade that for a 3 plus armor save, which helps keep them just a tiny bit safer. They're still dead fragile for the points cost though. The truly scary thing that the warp spiders can bring to the table is their flicker jump. In the movement phase, you can choose to make a 24 inch move if you don't charge which is some pretty godly movement shenanigans if you need it, meaning that you could potentially just phase from one ruin in your deployment zone to get some lines of sight on things that most of the things in your army might not be able to see, and then hit the enemy with a whole ton of death spinners. One unit of five will have six of these, including the Exarch, so essentially 66 standard flamer shots with devastating wounds, so we'll usually stack a fair amount of saves and also just automatic wounds on even some armoured targets, Overall, really quite a scary threatening unit that certainly needs to use terrain well, but it's pretty powerful just to be able to put them basically exactly where you want to and still potentially delete an entire enemy squad at the same time. I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. Finally for the craft worlds, there are the Shadow Spectres, the Forge World Aspect Warriors here. They're 95 points per 5 of them and strike with their Prism Rifles. Either a whole load of blast shots at strength 4, AP 1 and damage 1, or a more focused fire 1 that's quite good at killing terminators with its flat damage 3. Really nice general purpose fire there that's going to be a threat to basically any enemy infantry unit, and then they can keep themselves safe while delivering that kind of firepower with stealth, and they also get the option to move shoot move. So for a turn or two you could have multiple squads of these pinging out of ruins and then hiding again before the enemy can shoot back at them. Could be really quite frustrating to take the sort of casualties that these guys can put out without being able to hit them back at all. If and when they need to be a bit more adventurous, that does also just mean that they can get a very massive move as well. Move 12 inches, shoot, and then move another 6 inches. Again, all around excellent for getting to objectives and doing secondaries. Again, I'd rate these guys a 9 out of 10. The 3 jump infantry units that the Eldari have really frequently crop up in their most competitive tournament lists can be an absolute nightmare to deal with between the lot of them, though they are a bit dependent on having a properly set up competitive table with a whole bunch of line of sight blocking terrain. If you're playing on something that's a bit more sparse in terrain, they're not going to be quite as useful. Next up we've got the Drukhari Scourges, 110 points per 5 of them. These maybe aren't so enormously different from the Shadow Spectres, they move 14 inches with a 4 plus save this time, again with the 5 plus invulnerable. They get the same move shoot move type rule, but instead of anti infantry weapons, they get enormous anti tank dark lancers. A squad of 4 usually landing 2 hits at strength 12, AP 3, and damage D6 plus 2 on the enemy. Maybe more if you can spare some pain tokens for them. Scourges do seem to be perhaps one of the most auto include Drukhari units for that reason. It works out really quite well for them to be able to have multiple squads of these that can ping in and out of cover. Use their good movement to move somewhere that's got line of sight within 36 inches of an enemy tank, then use the second move to keep them safe somewhere behind terrain. Could be super frustrating for enemies losing entire vehicles to these guys, with no way to strike them back at all unless they've got things that move fast or indirect fire. Even without having many synergies with the Sky Splinter, they do seem to be almost auto-include for the Drukhari. They perhaps even seem to be more so in Inari when you can take them with Eldari and the Battle Host rerolls. Be rolling one hit and one wound each turn is pretty godly when you've got this kind of anti tank fire on the go. I feel like they're perhaps particularly stand out out of jump infantry units. I've chosen to rate them the big 10 out of 10 there. Definitely needs kind of careful play, but that sort of terrifying anti tank without being able to return fire is pretty big. Moving on to the Tyranids, and it seems like we're doing lots of the jump shoot jump units in one go. Here we have the gargoyles for 80 points. 
the wing swarms to descend on your hive city and start the devouring process. It's kind of a shame that we didn't get the winged warrior shrikes this time round. I wonder if Games Workshop might do those at some point in the future. Gargoyles are pretty excellent objective scorers though. It's really quite powerful to have something with objective control too with a 12 inch move and also getting that move shoot move rule. Both being really quite expendable, at least taking a little bit of effort to take down. And those kind of movement shenanigans, it's almost auto includes to include at least one unit of these guys and often people run more. You can do big things like just throw a big screen of them up the board to move block a bunch of enemies. You could potentially deep strike them and use the second move to snag primaries or secondaries. You could have that winged prime if you wanted the unit to be a bit more of a skirmisher unit that can actually do a little bit of melee threat. And they're really nice and unending swarm where you could potentially recycle a big unit of 20 of them multiple times. It'd be kind of hilarious to be throwing that up the board repeatedly, move it right up to the enemy army and watch them get killed and then just bring them back again next turn. Overall they're just pretty amazing Tyranid objective support. I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. For the Necrons, we've got the Triarch Praetorians at 120 points per 5 of them. These guys move 10 inches, have toughness 5, 2 wounds and a 3 plus save with their living metal reanimation protocols to try and keep them safe. And then have the option of either Particle Caster and Void Blade versus Rods of the Covenant for a bunch of Strength 5, AP 2 and Damage 2 attacks. I feel like the two do have trade-offs and both are kind of interesting really. Depends on whether you want to be extra good at destroying standard issue space marines, or maybe a little bit more balanced against the rest of the field and good at killing one wound infantry. They get to reroll charge rolls and can make a charge in which they fall back. Unfortunately I feel like at 120 points they're quite a long way from where they really need to be to compete for the Necrons. They do compare kind of horribly to race in my opinion, which are cheaper and much tougher for a unit of those. And I wouldn't say that there's enormous differences in the damage that they do. They're not going to be competing well against the things that can do cheap deep striking as well, like death marks, which can do a deep striking unit with not so dissimilar toughness for half the price. Overall, I've chosen to rate these guys a 3 out of 10. In the right situation, they can definitely still be usable, though I feel like they're just very far from optimal for the Necrons now, and need a really solid points cut if they want to be a bit more competitively relevant. For the Xenos factions that don't yet have jump units, it's the Genes of the Colts and the Leagues of Votan. Genes of the Colts more feel like an army of twisted humans that are uprising from below. Maybe not too surprising that they don't have any jump units yet. I could maybe see some sort of twisted acolytes with a wing mutation being kind of fun I suppose. And for the Leagues of Votan it feels like their range is kind of half released at the moment. It does seem very very likely that they'll be getting this unit of jump packs at some point in the future. This guy was the model released alongside the Hearthkin Salvagers kill team. It does feel like a really easy release that Games Workshop could do an entire unit of these of some sort. I'm not sure if they'd necessarily be armed with the same plasma axe and bolt pistol. But I feel like people wouldn't be too averse to it if they were. It would be quite nice to have a fast moving Votan melee unit. For the greenskins we have the storm boys. 65 points for greenskin violence hurtling through the air attached to a rocket pack. Made up of ranks of somewhat unusually regimented orcs, craving a bit more discipline as opposed to just doing whatever they want. At 65 points, they're a cheap unit with deep strike that seems to be the orky way of getting secondary objectives done most of the time. And when they're on the board, they can threaten to move a seriously long way. They move 12 inches and get to advance and charge innately, albeit with the chance to take some casualties as their rocket packs go haywire. They're not really all that tough to kill despite toughness 5. They only get a 5 plus save and 1 wounds besides the knob. But they do hit home with really quite a lot of violent attacks. 12 attacks at strength 4, AP 1, damage 1, and the knob gets 3 at strength 9, AP 2, damage 2, or getting a bit better in the war and getting sustained hits as well. Overall, they tend to be a unit that gets taken in smallish squads to do secondaries for the most part. I feel like a bigger unit to deliver some violence at extreme range isn't exactly the worst idea either. Overall, I've chosen to rank them at an 8 out of 10. For the Tau Empire, the Crisis Suits might technically be vehicle models. I feel like classically they've more often been jump infantry compared with vehicles and it wouldn't really have been right to leave them off the list. I did talk through the Crisis Suits in their own video earlier today which I'll link down in the video description. But going through it in brief, these guys count as vehicles, a toughness 5, usually with 5 wounds due to shield drones attached, a 3 plus save and get 2 guns out of their now quite locked down armoury. Depending on which unit variant you're running, the star side ones are the infantry destroying ones, listed at 140 points in the codex. They get burst cannons or flamers, 
Lots of spam shots at the enemy, and if they're not shooting monsters or vehicles, you get to improve the AP by one of those weapons, and they also can fall back and shoot. I feel like they're interesting for Montcar with the lethal hits. The Flamers are pretty good for the Retaliation Cadre with extra AP and Strength 5 on offer. And you could add in Commanders to add in a bit more threat against heavier stuff. Interesting enough, I think, I've chosen to rank them an 8 out of 10. The Fire Knife ones are listed as a bit more expensive in the Codex, though we still have to wait and see their final points cost. These get their Missile Pods with the longer range at Strength 7, Damage 2, and Plasma Rifles at the shorter range, Strength 8, AP 3, and Damage 3. These guys thing is to hit super reliably, they get to reroll hit rolls of 1 or reroll all hits against enemies at starting strength and their weapon systems allow them to ignore modifiers to hit as well, so just landing those hits very reliably indeed. Their damage output I wouldn't say is standout compared with the other two variants, though they are at least sort of general purpose, fairly good against medium infantry in particular. Maybe could be an interesting enough crisis unit to play a little bit cagier alongside a commander having a slightly longer range than some. It could be quite a good jump shoot jump unit option. Overall I've chosen to rank them a 7 out of 10 though. Their damage output feels a little bit less overwhelming than the other two. Will be interesting to see which of these get used more often in more competitive games. Finally there's the Sunforge 460 points for three of them. These are the tank destroying ones with dual fusion blasters. They get a 4 plus invulnerable save from shield generators and gets 2 reroll wound and damage rolls against monsters and vehicles, giving them some genuinely terrifying stats if they're maximally buffed. If you can get them within melter range, and they're guided by a stealth suit unit, a unit of 3 of these should be posing a pretty serious threat to one rounding most standard sized vehicles in the game, and you could add a commander for extra firepower against the toughest stuff around, and threaten to drop them just outside of 3 inches for the retaliation card or stratagem if you were running that. Overall they do feel pretty terrifying for tower anti-tank, I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. Talking of the stealth suits, you get 3 of these for 60 points, and I feel like unless their points go way up, they're going to be a unit that's really coming to the fore in the new codex. 2 get burst cannons and 1 gets a fusion blaster. They can take a marker drone and deliver some interesting rapid ingress for crisis suits, plus they get to infiltrate up the board. Really just quite nice to have some board control with cheap units like these, screening out the enemy and taking up positions in the midfield. The big thing from the Codex though is that now their forward observers rule got even better. Each time they act as a guiding unit, you get two reroll hit rolls and wound rolls of one for their guided unit's targets. They are really quite excellent observers. If you didn't have any access to rerolls at all, that would usually be around a 36% damage boost, which is really quite serious on top of the boost of guiding and ignores cover. Between all that, I feel like they're going to be really quite an interesting choice going forward. I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. Finally for the tower we have the winged auxiliaries that are the Vespid Stingwings, 65 points for a unit of 5 of them, for that you get at least a somewhat fragile jump infantry unit at 1 wound, toughness 4 and a 4 plus save, but they do have some fairly interesting firepower, particularly for destroying space marines, 10 shots with neutron blasters at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 2. The Stingwings get an interesting jump on and off the board rule, though it is rather unfortunately a bit less powerful than ones of quite a lot of other factions get, most of those allow you to jump off the board at the end of the opponent's turn, which is very nice. Unfortunately, this one needs to be declared at the end of your movement phase, which means that you'll miss out on a turn of just doing things in general. But it still could be interesting enough for some later game redeploys or deep strike turn 4. Overall, not unusable though, as cheap units to drop in and do objectives and things. I've chosen to rate them a 7 out of 10. So with the Xenos talked about, that just about brings us to the end of a look through Jump Infantry Units in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. As always, look forward to hearing any other thoughts or insights on them down in the comments below. I feel like as a unit class, they often tend to be really quite relevant for their armies. Cheap units to do grunt work and secondary things are quite nice, and some of them can certainly threaten a big amount of damage as well. Lots of them are really relevant for their armies. The Taraxi seem to be doing good work for the Adeptus Mechanicus, even if it is mainly Skitari body spam. The Sisters Wands and the Storm Boys for the Orcs I think are pretty nice in small numbers for secondary objective doing. I feel like the Eldari and Drukari Wands are all fairly godly compared with plenty of other options. The sheer movement shenanigans combined with some pretty good damage output I feel makes them very hard to pass up for their respective armies. And otherwise I feel like Stealth Suits with a big damage buff and the Gargoyles for the Tyranids with their move, shoot, move and flying chaff objective shenanigans are all pretty great as well. Let me know which ones make it their way into your list, and whether you think I've overrated or underrated anything here. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, 
I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Awesome Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages as well, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.